welcome to the Mag Network podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Mag Network podcast. Um, and we've got a return visit from Steve Mallet. Uh, Steve is the Southeast Region Rep. Uh, good evening, Steve. Yeah, good evening, Colin. Uh, uh, good to see you again. That's it. So we're going to uh, have a bit of a chat about um, the the recent events since the, uh, the the fight motorcycle theft meeting. Obviously, you had the the first one in the country down there in Gillingham in Kent. Um, and, uh, what, what's what's been the uh, the impact of that meeting? What's happened since, shall we say? Yeah, we we've we've kept the uh, the Facebook page open, and anything to do with theft, we, we we add to it. We've got plenty of followers there. But anyway, at at the meeting itself, the Kent PCC Matthew Scott promised uh, a local councillor who was in charge of uh, parking and roads in Kent uh, or Medway, I should say. Uh, some money to improve uh, the secure motorcycle parking. Well, before we've managed to get our hands on the money, the administration in the Medway towns changed from a Conservative to Labour. So we chased up uh, the councillor's successor, the Labour guy, and we didn't have a lot of success to start with. We told him that this, this free money was available from the PCC, all promised on camera at the meeting, and nothing much happened. Um, so... There's a local organisation in Medway which keeps an eye on uh, local politics and all the little machinations go going on in, in, in the council. And they held a BBC Question Time-like event at the local university. And we saw that on stage was the uh, Conservative councillor to whom the money had been promised and the new Labour guy um, who was supposed to be following it all up. So we went along there and got front row seats. There was three of us from North Kent Mag there. And we put the question, well, why haven't you followed up this free money when the council itself, itself is, is heading for bankruptcy? And he said, oh, well, we have. I've got the bid together. Someone should have told you. And we've only done it because you told us about it. So that was great. So I, I pointed out to him that we had a meeting booked with the PCC and Chief Inspector General of the Kent Police booked for three days hence. And could he get this bid not actually in before the meeting so they could show that they were playing their part as well? So he, we, he was as good as his word. And within 24 hours, the bid was in and we've been awarded £2,000 to update or upgrade, I should say, five motorcycle parking spaces within the Medway towns. Uh, so that was great. So then a couple of days after that, we went along to our meeting at uh, Medway Police Station with Chief Inspector Jenner. Uh, sadly, Kent PCC couldn't come, but it was a genuine reason. He had some family problems and at the very last minute he couldn't come. But we still had a very good meeting. Uh, JC Quinton, South East Deputy Rep, was with me. And we put a number of points to uh, Chief Inspector Jenner, one, one of which was conflicting uh, bike theft figures for the same period. We'd got uh, figures from Freedom of Information. Um, and this was explained to us that unusually, if a bike is stolen from a garage, it's classed as burglary and not a bike theft. So when you take all these things into account, the figures did actually add up. So that's sort of more or less uh, covered that query. Um, they haven't had any special anti-bike theft operations in Medway since March when they had a big drive and, and arrested quite a few people. But it turns out uh, the only two people they've arrested have been put away and bike thefts have actually dropped dramatically. So not saying all, but a lot of the bike thefts were just courtesy of these two people who've now been put away. Um, so that was good. We followed on from that um, at the March the 15th meeting. We had a lot of uh, we got funding to get some fr uh, locks from Oxford Locks. We got that from a local fund, which is funded by the sale of unclaimed stolen property, which has been recovered by the police. So we got enough for 25 locks there. And we, with Chief Inspector Jenner's blessing and his backing, We've now put in for another grant, so we're hoping to get uh, 50 locks this time so we can do another lock giveaway. And this is all 
on the back of the fact we've made these good connections with, with these local politicians and the local police. Um, we're hoping to work with the community policing group, uh, which hang out at uh, a big shopping mall near us called Blue Water, and we're hoping to set up a, uh, a uh, mag stand there in the motorcycle park there and give these locks away as and when we get the money and get the locks. But that's we're trying to do it with the police to show that they are involved because there is a lot of, shall we say, negative speech about the police, and we want to show they are doing stuff, but they don't always publicise it. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'll say that there's a there's a couple of interesting points in what you said. I mean, the the fact that the the figures get distort, um, distorted by how the reporting system works. Like you say, if if a motorcycle is stolen from from inside your garage, for example, that is that is classed as a burglary and not reported as a motorcycle theft. Uh, so again, it's sort of like all all these figures and stats that everybody quotes. You have to take them with a very large pinch of salt because uh, they're not. They're not always the true reflection of what's really going on, are they? That's right. And, and I also pushed the uh, very interesting figures that you gave me, Colin, about, I think it's, is it 20% of uh, KSIs on motorcycles yep. uh, uh, happen to, st when they're being ridden by uh, motorcycle thieves, i.e. they're stolen bikes. So I, I did point out both to uh, Chief Inspector Jenner and uh, the councillors at the uh, question time meeting that it's a you know it's a it's a win-win situation you cut down on motorcycle thefts potentially you're cutting down on, on killed and seriously injured as well so mm -hmm. that that seemed to go down quite well with them but yeah i think this this is an idea that is is beginning to get traction i mean I, i've just been um speaking to um the dorset police and crime commissioner and uh, the charity dot bike because they did a uh, a heavily subsidized uh, disc lock giveaway which was funded by the police and crime commissioner um so again i think this is an idea that we we should be pushing in in every region uh, with every police and crime commissioner's office to say that this is this is a successful method of uh, of reducing motorcycle theft and also having a positive impact on the road safety uh, side of things um, so yeah, it's it's proven to work and has has been shown shown as successful. So I think that's something that um, yeah many, many other regions and uh, and local groups should should consider getting in touch with their with their local um, police and crime commissioner uh, and seeing if they can push it. Because if you don't ask, you certainly don't get, do you? That that's right. And and just you just got to make yourself look credible and, and responsible. Which, that that's uh, that's what you have to do. And uh, I spoke to Chief Inspector Jenner. Uh, about Operation Yellowfin up in Hull, Humberside Hull, because that was a, a really good scheme quite a while ago, and, and you've now sort of revitalised that, I understand, through your recent meeting in Hull. Yeah. So uh, Chief Inspector Jenner is going to get in touch with, I think it's Inspector Derek Hussain, who runs the uh, Yellowfin up in Hull, uh, so they can swap ideas. So, you know, so they don't have to reinvent the wheel locally, you know, if it's already been done. So I thought that was really good. If they, we get police forces talking to each other, they, they, they can bounce ideas off each other. Yeah, I mean, the, this is a, a large part of uh, what, what we try to achieve with these meetings is, is it's, it's about seeking out best practice and making sure that gets shared because, say, police forces are notoriously bad at communicating with each other. Um, so anything that we can do to encourage that, that communication uh, sharing of ideas and best practice, what works and what doesn't, uh, can only be to our advantage because that's that's going to help uh, overall the, the an improvement hopefully across the country as opposed to just in one area where we happen to have the uh, the engagement. Yeah, that, that's it. Um, but the main thing is with with any uh, mag campaigning is it takes time. You know, you go into these campaigns thinking thinking you're going to change the world. Well, look. I, I suppose that should be being more encouraging, but you're not, you're not going to, and it takes time. You just have to chip away and chip away and chip away. And another thing I've learned is keep keep good records of everything you said, when you said it, how you said it, so you can refer back to these things. Um, it, it, it's it's a quite a quite a learning curve, but it's but it's very satisfying. Even when you get a bit of a small bit of progress, we got this money for the parking. It's not a lottery rollover win, but it's 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 something we wouldn't have had if we hadn't got involved. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, it's it's important for for sort of like other other mag uh, groups to realise is that um, yeah, there's, there's no rocket science involved as such. There's nothing very complicated in terms of what we're doing. It is about being persistent and 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 keeping keeping on asking the same questions until you get a result. Um, so it, yeah, you as you say, there, there's no silver bullets with any of this stuff. We've got to keep on chipping away at it little by little. Um, but certainly, if um, if mag activists are not out there doing it, then there's uh, there's probably not an awful lot of hope for anybody um, actually changing the world. Is, is there? We, we've got to keep keep uh, keep keep plugging away at it. That's right. I mean, it's, uh, we've all got to learn. I mean, I never did anything like this uh, thirty years ago. I wasn't doing this sort of stuff. But you pick it up, you know, and it's and it's interesting. You you do get a buzz out of. Uh, Getting a, getting a success, I suppose you've got to be a bit stubborn and just just keep at it. But that's what we need is more people joining and more people getting involved. You know, go along to your local meeting and see what you can do. Um, yeah, that, there's all Absolutely. we can always we can always do with more help. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So uh, yeah, like I say, I think uh, it's been great great speaking to you this evening, uh, Steve, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody listening will take away a little bit of uh, hope from this discussion. Uh, Hopefully, we've, we've shown that um, the, these meetings that we're doing around the country, they're not just a, a single event and, uh, and forget about it. It is you know, simply the start of an awful lot of engagement and effort that goes in by local MAG activists uh, after the meeting. That's what really makes the difference. Yeah, I quite agree. Quite agree. Stick at it. Okay, Colin, thank you very much. All right, that's brilliant.